Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Micah, this is my YouTube channel, Floating in Dreams, where I just make makeup and fashion videos for fun. And today's video, I wanna talk about Essence and Catrice stuff, in case you're new here. I do a lot of Essence and Catrice videos all the time. If you're not new here, then maybe you have seen my first impression that I did with the new Essence and Catrice stuff that they released for the spring summer season this year. I already did those first impressions before, so I'll make sure to link those in the description box down below. And today is going to be the follow-up on those two videos, now that I've had more of a chance to try a lot of these products a little bit more thoroughly and to give you my sort of roundup, my general thoughts on how I feel these products went. Um, I do have to preface this video by saying that since these products have been released, uh, uh, Catrice has also released a limited edition um, Clean ID collection that I did a video with in May. And unfortunately, I have just not been able to test drive those products enough to include a lot of those in this video today. So the ones that I have tried since making that video will be featured here. Um, but the other products will just, as time progresses, I will make sure to review those on my blog. So make sure that you also always check the link that is in the description box, uh, box below, because I do write full makeup reviews with swatches, looks, how things go on to the skin, over on my blog. I keep those things separately. So I will also be linking to any reviews that I already have up on my blog to any of the products I will be mentioning today. So that's everything I wanted to say before we got started with the video. Let's get cracking. Um, so I've just kind of lumped everything together. Let's start with lips because I have those separated out into their own little cubby. I'm not sure if everything is here that was what that what that I tried out. Um, but there were definitely quite a few things that they came out with, especially Catrice. So let's start then with Essence, because they essentially only came out with lip balms. And they came out with a new line of like lip care, the Lip Care Booster. Uh, this is the lip serum with peach oil. And this is the lip butter with coconut oil. And I have to say that I wasn't super impressed with these. I didn't find them super hydrating for my lips. I swear by uh, like really thick, really nourishing lip balms because my lips get super dry. For instance, for the nighttime, I have been using the NYX Rev the Meal lip balm, and for the daytime, I'm using the uh, CO Bigelow uh, Vanilla Mint. And these just don't really quite cut it. I think I could use them up if I just use them at the start of the day. The start of my lip makeup routine, I like putting on a balm so that my lips don't get too dry once I apply my lipstick for the day. But I just feel that these, they are okay. They're, they're good enough lip balms where I'm like, these won't be decluttered. I will definitely be rotating these in at some point, but I just wasn't wowed by these and I've used them a couple of times. And maybe it's because we had a really cool spring season and it was just really like rainy and cold and bleh, that my lips just need a little bit more. These are definitely not the kind of high, uh, like really, really highly nourishing lip balms that I need, especially when it is a little bit colder. Maybe for the summertime, they could be just enough. Uh, I definitely have that with my skin in the summertime. I need a little less, but these just, maybe if you have more normal skin or if your lips aren't too dry, these could be really nice for you. But for me personally, I felt they just didn't do enough. A product I did really like was the Catrice Watermelon Lip Balm. Uh, let's see what the official name is. The Watermelon Shine Glow Lip Balm. Now I used the green one that they do in this lip balm line as well uh, last year. And that one is a green that turns pink. This is already tinted and you will get this kind of tint on your lips when you wear it. So definitely when we had a couple of nicer days in March, I definitely did pull this out because unlike no makeup makeup days, like what I'm wearing today, today is one of, it's summer. Like last week it was still like raining down buckets and today we have summer. It's going to be like 25 degrees today. In the Netherlands, there's just no in between and from one week to the next, sometimes within the same day, you can experience as much as three different seasons. Um, so yeah, this is a kind of product where on make no makeup makeup days, I do reach for it. And these are really nice and hydrating and nourishing. For me, this was more successful than the Essence ones for sure. This has that, you know, if you know watermelon candy, like the little watermelons that you can get from a pick and mix, 
that's what this smells like so that has to be your cup of tea if you're not, not a fan of fragrance then stay away but on me i found that it's not too offensive and it really reminds me of like sour candy and that is my favorite thing so for me the scent isn't too offensive and i feel it disappears within it just a few minutes when i first apply this it's like barely noticeable once i've even like like i don't even think about it so this is a really nice lip balm and i would prefer like recommend this over the essence ones for sure then Catrice came out with just one new lipstick shade in their Demi Matte line, which is this Pink Addiction shade, which is this really nice, vibrant, hot pink. I love a good bright pink. I wore this quite a bit in the springtime already. I really like this formula as well, but essentially I now only have two of these because apart from the red that I really like from the line, this was the only other shade that I really decided to keep because I liked it. So yeah, the Demi Mattes, I have a full video where I swatched the original lineup that they did. They have been coming out with some new shades over time, but again, I can link that down in the description box if you're if you want to see all 10 of those go on. Speaking of a lipstick video that I did, uh, Catrice came out with loads of other new things and I did a full video where I try out all of these on my lips in this giant video where I test out all three of the new lines that they were doing. Uh, so I can also again link that video down below in case you haven't seen it yet, is their glossy lip oils. Uh, so these are featured in that video and these are all five of the shades. As I had predicted, not all of the shades really show up on me. I've got naturally quite pigmented lips and very sheer formulas just don't really show up on me. So the ones that I decided to keep were uh, the two, like, let me, let me do it like this. So the, the two brighter shades as well as one of the lighter ones. The other two just didn't really, like, these three lightest shades, they all looked similar on my complexion, I found. And these are really nice and nourishing on the lips, I have to say. Um, I actually had to use this as an overnight lip balm because I was in a pinch and I forgot to pack one when I had to travel for work. And these do nourish your lips really, really nicely. And these lip oils are really nice. They are really good quality. I really like them, but in terms of like shade variety, they don't really do a lot. Now, these are uh, three out of, I think, six or five of the new Clean ID lipsticks. So these are part of their regular line, even though they came out with a separate limited edition Clean ID line. Like, I don't get it. Like, <laughs> just make all of those products permanent, Catrice, uh, because they seem like really nice products. But yeah, the lipstick range is um, full, like is permanent. So that's a good, th good thing. And again, all of the lipsticks I'm trying out in that video that I have linked for you down below. I've kept the shades that I like the best, which were, uh, the like brighter shades but it is a lot of nudes so if you're looking for a good neutral lipstick from Catrice you want it to be vegan with natural packaging that is better for the environment then the Clean ID line is really nice however Catrice also does another Clean ID line which has more white to the packaging please stay away from those this is the updated formula and this formula is about a million times better than that these shades were more flattering too. Again, I have those original Clean ID lipsticks in a video as well, so I'll make sure to link that down below as well in case you would like to see the original lineup of these. But yeah, the second rendition was much better, much better shades, and they just look a lot more flattering on me. And then finally, I know for sure that this came in a pack of four, but again, I decided to keep one shade in my makeup collection. These are the uh, Ultimate Stay Lip Tints, and these are a waterproof formula that turned out to be very waterproof in the pictures and also uh, like what I like when I put the entire review together, I decided to test these out to see how long they would wear. Um, this is, it promises, how much time does it promise? It just says that it's long lasting, so it doesn't really make a promise of like, it's supposed to be like wearing for 24 hours, but these stay on until you take them off with an oil-based cleanser. Um, they are super, they're literally like a lip stain. You put these on, they kind of sink into your lips, and these colors all look really bright, but I found that especially this corally shade pulled kind of nude on me. Uh, I decided to keep the brightest one because that's the kind of shade I would go for, but this gave that lovely like 
popsicle kind of shade that I really like in the summertime. So these were really successful for me. And then we have this uh, conglomeration of some Essence and Catrice stuff. Let's just get to the Essence stuff first because I have less of that. Essence's new update wasn't that ginormous. It wasn't as much as Catrice. Uh, they came out with a new eyeliner in a brown. Their liquid ink eyeliner is one of my favorites. It's super cheap and cheerful. I'm not too heavy on the liquid liner, like it's not a product I use a lot. So I like having them on hand and the fact that Essence now does it in a brown works wonderfully for me because brown on my fair skin can just look a little stark. So if you also of the opinion that liquid liner in a black is not always what you want, then look into this because this brown liner is really nice and it has the same lovely formula as well as the same lovely applicator as the original uh, liquid ink has. The uh, Hello Good Stuff uh, Face Oil Care Glow and Prime with Rosehip Seed Oil. Now this for me is a product that kind of launched at the wrong moment. Uh, if they had launched this for the winter time I would have liked it a lot better because in the summertime I'm just not as keen on using a face oil as a primer. I have used it as a primer in the past and it does work that way. Um, however, at the moment, I'm not really uh, also needing another face oil to try in my skincare routine. And when it comes to skincare products, since my skin is quite sensitive, the turnover rate with how quickly I can try those products is a little little longer than I can do with makeup. Um, so yeah, at the moment, I haven't used this a lot as like a skincare product. I've only used it once or twice to see how it sits under makeup. And that worked quite well. However, on a hot day like today, this definitely wouldn't be my pick. So I think this is going to be the kind of product that I'm going to keep around for like the fall season and then rotate it into a shop my stash when I need a primer to like use every single day. Because then I think this will be really nice, a little bit of extra nourishing, uh, like a layer of some extra nourishing ingredients before I put on uh, the rest of my makeup. And then Essence came out with the Sensitive line. So the Skin Loving Sensitive. There's actually a third product, which I forgot to bring up here, uh, but it's their concealer. So this comes in a primer, a powder, and a concealer. And I have reviews up for all three of these over on my blog. The primer is currently in my shop, my stash, as well as the concealer. Be that's the reason why I forgot to bring it up here, uh, because they are products that I'm trying to use up because I like them enough for me to keep going with them. The primer is fragrance free, but other than that, it is the Essence Hydrating Primer that I already used this winter. The formula is the same, the texture is the same, it does the same thing. It's just a bog standard primer that I feel doesn't really do anything extra. It doesn't make your skin look more glowy. It doesn't blur your pores. It's just, again, that extra layer before you put it on your makeup, just to make it wear a little bit longer. But again, it doesn't do a whole lot. It feels very lotiony. It's very skincare-like, but it definitely cannot substitute a good moisturizer. Now, the concealer I do really like, which is why it's in my shop, my stash, but it only comes with 3.5 milliliters of product. So I'm curious to see how long it is actually going to last me for and when it will run out. It only comes in three shades, which is the limitation that I feel that Essence almost always has. I have mine in the shade Fair and I've been using it all throughout May. Uh, I think I used up my Too Faced concealer in April. Yes, so for all of May, I've been using it. And I think if I use it for like another month or two, it will probably be gone. I like it enough. Essence do some really good concealers, I find. I have some really good experience with their concealers and this is no different. So yeah, this is a lovely little product and uh, yeah, I wish I could hold it up for you, but unfortunately I didn't. However, I did use it in that video and I also use it in my, I think my get ready with me that I did for you. Uh, last May as well. So I have other videos up where I do use the video or the product and I also have a review up as I mentioned. And then the sensitive uh, uh, powder. This is the uh, skin loving sensitive uh, mineral powder blurring and mattifying. And this was a really nice powder. And I think it's actually very comparable to the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless filter that I'm currently using. Some people have been saying it's a dupe. I don't feel it is a dupe for a number of reasons. I feel that this product feels very differently in the pan and just the texture of it isn't as finely milled. However, I feel that in terms of performance, this product 
is exactly the same. When I put it on my skin, it looks the same way as a uh, Charlotte Tilbury does in terms of making my makeup wear better. This is exactly what this does. Um, so in terms of how it works, I think it's a dupe. It's just that when you feel this and you feel the Charlotte Tilbury powder, then the Charlotte Tilbury is far more finely milled and it feels just a lot thinner in its texture. However, with this, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it from there, I have already achieved quite a dent in this, and I think I wanna actually go back to this powder once I run out of my Charlotte Tilbury one, because I did like it that much, and with my dry skin, finding a powder that doesn't make my makeup look super cakey is quite a feat. So to find it at such an affordable uh, price point at the drugstore, yeah, I think this is a nice little gem from Essence. If you haven't tried it yet and you can get your hands on this, please do so. And then finally, Essence came out with an eyeshadow palette. I tried the Out in the Wild, Don't Stop Blooming. Uh, this, is, this palette also comes in green packaging when it's called something differently. And this is uh, really good quality when it comes to, to Essence eyeshadows. I was really impressed with that. However, color story-wise, I think we've seen this a million times over. I also think this is very similar to some of the Disney Princess collection that they did in the fall time. That they did in the fall time. And uh, they've also been doing like these daily dose of palettes. And one of those is also rosy toned. So I wish that Essence was just a little bit more inventive when it comes to their color stories. Is this a bad palette? By no means, but I have shades like this a million times over. So for me personally, it is a bit superfluous, even though it is nicely cool toned, especially over here with these like rosy taupey shades. Those are some of my favorites. You get some really good transition shades, um, but this like pink in the middle wasn't the pop of color I had hoped it to be. So it, it, it is a palette that has really good quality for the price point. I would definitely recommend this if you don't own any rosy toned palettes yet yourself and you're looking at a very affordable price point, then Essence is definitely one to check out. Um, but yeah, this is quality wise, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just for someone like me with so many other eyeshadow palettes, I would reach for, like, if I want to go rosy toned, I'll reach for my Pat McGrath over Essence. I'm terribly sorry, Essence, but that's just the way it is. And then we've got Catrice left, and again, Catrice came out with some new skincare stuff. This is their Sensitive Moisturizing Serum Milk with 2% Pre and Probiotic Complex. It is perfume-free, uh, and I just wanted to try this. I have only just managed to roll this into my skincare routine, so again, as I mentioned, with skincare, it can take a little bit longer for me to try products out. And therefore, with this product as well, I've used it only once or twice. So for me, I just don't have enough data yet to report back to you whether this is any good. I mean, it felt nice those times where I have used it. And this, I think, is a good, like, first step slash, like, just a, a little bit of hydration before you get started with the rest of your skincare routine. I personally am a big fan of layering skincare products, so for me, even if I do roll it in, I'm not really sure that I'm going to really be able to say anything to the effects of this, just this product, because my skin needs a whole lot more than just a moisturizing serum milk. I definitely need an oil and a moisturizer, and like, I need the whole nine yards, so that's why this, I'm a little undecided on. For brows, Catrice came out with quite a few things. They came out with the Brow Fix Soap Stylist, which is like a brow soap that comes in this little compact. I have only tried one or two brow soaps in the past. This one doesn't come with a brush. I would have liked it to come with a spoolie so that you can make more use out of it. The Makeup Revolution one does, and I have to say I like this. The only reason, the only downside I feel this product has really is the fact that you need to wet it for it to work, so it, it means like an extra step. So for me to use it on the daily, probably not, but I did really like the effect this gave my brows, plus my brows stay put all day, so. Um, but when it comes to ease of use, I do, I am a fan of like a pencil and a brow gel. Uh, I have only been using this one for about a week or two now, the Fill and Fix Waxy Brow Pen from Catrice. This was lovely, this was really, really good. Um, and I really like the shade. It has a like a triangular shaped oop, Has this like triangular shaped sort of pencil. The shade is pretty good for me it, it just fills in my brow super quickly So I do really like that But what I'm truly a fan of now is the volume and lift brow mascara from Catrice 
This is lovely. I love my Essence Make Me Brow. We all know my love affair about that. If you've been around, you know. I went through like five tubes of that stuff and I keep trying other things thinking, will this be any better? Benefit, Glossier, ColourPop, e.l.f. Like I've tried them all. This is on par with the e.l.f. with the Essence Make Me Brow and the other ones just aren't. Um, this is that same lovely texture. It makes your brows look a little bit fuller, a bit fluffier. I really like this and I think this is actually one of the issues I have with brow mascara is that it dries out really quickly and that they get really thick or gloopy or they start to smell really badly. This one, again, I've used it for quite a few months now and it's still going strong and I really like this product. So this, uh, this is definitely one that if I run out, I may actually re repurchase this. This is like the first product where I'm like, yeah, I would repurchase that. Then from the Clean ID line from Catrice that I did try that are new are these two products. So these are from that May video. So the foundation is the uh, High Cover Luminous Matte Foundation uh, in the shade 004 Light Almond. And this is a lovely foundation. I use this for like two weeks straight in May. It has really nice coverage. It, it's more like that skin tint kind of vibe, but it does have coverage. The only problem I have with this is that the shade is far too peachy for me. So shade range wise, again, this only comes in three shades. Ah, um, it, I can make it work. I can pull this off for sure, but I have to be very careful with how I blend this out to make it look good enough. But yeah, I did like, I became a little bit obsessed with this when I just started trying it because I loved the way this looked and how it wore throughout the day. I could put this on at like 7 a.m. before I went out to work, came home, and it still looked nice despite wearing a mask on the train and at the office, so. Then we have the Clean Idea Full Lash Mascara Extra Black. Uh, this was a nice mascara, it's just, you, you will hear it, look. It's just, it got really thick and gloopy really fast. And that is, with Essence and Catrice, I also really like the Essence Falls Lash Princess Mascara. That also, I feel, dries out really quickly once you've opened it. And this is suffering from the same problem. It starts to get really flaky and thick, uh, and it just makes it really difficult to do your eyelashes. So this is already a product that I count as used up because it just wasn't working for me anymore. And then some more base products. A product that wasn't new this round but that I just hadn't really found anywhere yet was the Love Skin and Respect Earth Hydro Primer. This is the replacement of their Fresh It Up Primer and I am very sad to say that I like the other primer a lot better. I still want to do a video where I put these side by side and I sort of test out to see the differences. Um, to really, really be 100% sure. But this just, I, I believe it says it contains no silicones. So it says on the back here that it contains no silicones. I have to say that it feels like a silicone based primer. Just based on like sensory experience, this just feels a lot thicker and less hydrating than the original formula, which I felt was a dupe for that primerizer primer that from Smashbox that everybody was raving about a while ago. Uh, but this one, sadly, is just nothing like it. And I think I might like it. I think it's an okay replacement, but I just prefer the other ones so much more. And then the Prime and Fine Dewy Glow uh, a Fixing Spray, which now comes in a larger size. I had seen this product around, but I had no recollection of me actually trying it. Uh, this is the Prime and Fine Setting Spray that I love. The multi talent one is one of my favorites. I'm currently using one up as we speak. But this is one with a glowy sort of finish. And it's glowy because it has actually shimmer particles. And I was like, when I saw that, like, oh, how is that going to work? However, I feel that once it's on the skin, you don't see those shimmer particles. Like if you do it very close by, like if you spray it this close to your hand, which I did for a swatch, you can see sparkle on your on your skin. But when you like really hold the flask away from your face really well and you just spray it on, it looks really dewy. Um, so I do think I really like this. Apparently this was really hyped up by US beauty gurus. I don't know why I missed that, but very often what happens is we get these Essence and Catrice products so much earlier than anybody else in the world that very often by the time they reach the US and they are hyped up by US beauty gurus, either the product has already been discontinued, Essence Pure Nude Highlighter, anyone? 
that's been taken off the European market for years now. You can no longer buy it here, even though in the US it's available and it became available in different shades, which <laughs> over a year, there was only ever one shade and it was much too dark for me. So, which is why I never bought it. <laughs> but yeah, that's just, that's just the way things go. So different territories, they don't release everything at the same time. Especially if you're in the US and you've seen anything here that I've talked about that you're like, ooh, I wanna get it, I can buy it. You're gonna have to wait around six to nine months for these things to hopefully make its way because they also don't release everything in the US, I know that. So yeah, this is lovely, but I kind of sort of missed it because I, I just, I wasn't in tune with that. And then I've got two eyeshadow palettes for you. I have the Neo, Neo Nude neon nude uh, eyeshadow palette. This was limited edition for spring, so I think in terms of availability it's probably really difficult to get a hold of. Uh, I thought this was really pretty actually when I tried it. It's got warm tones over here, cool tones over here, and you get three pops of something neon to just amp up the look, and this was lovely quality from Catrice. I'm really happy to have this because I don't have that many neon shades and these are pretty good neons. Like I was really happy with what these did. So this is a really love, like, nu lovely neutral palette with a pop of something. And then last but not least, they came out with the Pro Lavender Breeze, Pro Slim Eyeshadow Palette Lavender Breeze. Now this is the purpley palette. It's more cool toned. It's very, very light. Fair skinned people. Hear me out, this is your palette. Um, some people were asking, is it the same as the Norvina palette, like the original one? Not at all, I put some comparative swatches in my review when I did that, so in case you would like to see that, make sure you check out the link below. But yeah, this, this palette is just, <sighs> it's pretty, it's limiting if you have anything deeper than my skin tone. I can make this work quite well. The purple here, the purple shimmer, has to be layered quite a bit for it to show up as purple. Some of the purples in here show up a little bit pink, but if you approach this as a cool tone neutral palette with a pop of something, then I think you can have a really nice palette for sure. I do feel that quality-wise, this is not as good as the Pro Slim Next Net Gen nudes that they did last year for spring. So I feel that the quality isn't as buttery smooth as that one is. The, the swatches just weren't as rich, but it could also be down to the fact that these shades are so incredibly light that especially this top row, even on my fair skin, they barely show up. So this is definitely something that if you have a very deep skin tone, this is not going to be your cup of tea. And by now, I actually did buy myself the two warm tone palettes from the line that I didn't own yet. So by the end of summer, I wanna be able to try those palettes. And then I wanna feature all five of the palettes that Catrice has come out with in this line and do like a roundup video about all five of them and with looks and swatches and show you like the full rundown of these five palettes so that you hopefully have a better idea of how they all compare and whether they are similar quality or not. Uh, so I have yet to try the two warm toned ones, um, but yeah, I, this is the third one I've tried and I feel that this is the least, the least well done one quality and color story wise. Like it's cute, it's nice, it works, um, but yeah, un unless you're like snow white fair, this is not going to work for everybody. So those were all of the products that I wanted to share with you in this video, the update, how I feel about these now that we're two to three months down the line from first having tried these. I hope it was helpful that this gives you an idea of where I stand regarding these products and now that maybe these products are coming your way that you have a bit more of an in-depth like idea of what these might be like. Um, I am definitely going to be trying out those Clean ID products still, um, but those reviews will go up on my blog because by the time I can do a video on them, I'm pretty sure that you will no longer be able to buy any of those products, so it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll keep those for the blog. <laughs> but yeah, I always do loads of S's and Catrice videos. I think I do at least one or two like videos a month about these brands because they're very easy for me to get where I live. So if you would like to stay tuned for more S's and Catrice content, then please stay tuned because I do do that regularly. And for now, all I can say is thank you very much for watching today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week. So I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.